Amen. Let's all stand together. Glad to have you this evening. 260 there in your hymnals. 260. We'll sing all three verses. He is able to deliver thee. 260 there in your hymnals. Let's sing it now on that first. Tis the grandest theme through the ages rung. Tis the grandest theme for a mortal tongue. Tis the grandest theme that the world e'er sung. Our God, able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. Though by sin oppressed, go to him. For rest, our God is able to deliver thee. On that second, tis the grandest theme in the earth for me. Tis the grandest theme for a mortal strain. Tis the grandest theme, tell the world again. Our God is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. Though by sin oppressed, go to him for rest. Our God is able to deliver thee. Amen. On that last, tis the grandest theme. Come on now. To the sinful soul, look to God in faith. He will make thee whole. Our God is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. Though by sin oppressed, go to him for rest. Our God is able to deliver thee. Well, good evening. We're certainly glad to have you with us tonight on this Wednesday evening. What a beautiful week. Amen. Man, I mean to tell you, it has been picture perfect out there. And uh, just, uh, boy, enjoying the sunshine and just uh, thankful for a little bit of dry weather. We've had a few, a few weeks or so of some really cloudy, wet weather, and so it's been well appreciated. Amen. Well, again, we are glad and thankful that you could be here tonight, and we're going to go ahead and have a word of prayer. And then we'll go ahead and move on from that point. Again, I guess there's a game tonight, and we'll be doing our memory game. And so be prepared. Start getting your minds focused and dialed in. You don't sound too excited and anxious. But anyway, we're going to do it. All right? So let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you again for this time together. We're grateful for all you do for us. We are looking forward to what you're going to do in our service tonight as you speak to our hearts through your word. We ask that you'd be with our choir as they sing, and Lord, just uh, bless the special music. May everything be done uh, in a means by which it will bring glory and honor to you. Lord, we want everything, Father, to point to you. Thank you for your love for us, and thank you for how you meet our needs. We just commit the service now into your hands and ask that you would be glorified and magnified. You're so worthy of it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated.
Amen. Let's all stand together. 288 there in your hymnals. 288, I am resolved. 288, let's stand and sing that verse together now. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have allured my sight. Come on now. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee on that second. I am resolved to go to the Savior, leaving my sin and strife. He is the true one, he is the just one, he had the words of life. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and greatest, highest, I will come to thee on that last. I am resolved to follow the Savior, faithful and true each day. Heed what he saith, do what he willeth, he is the living way. I will hasten to Hasten so glad and free, Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to Thee. All right, we're going to go ahead and have a word of prayer for the offering. And boy, it's hard to believe that just a week ago we were ending our spring revival. I mean, it seems like it was just yesterday to me, and yet here we are. It's been a whole week. Well, anyway, we certainly enjoyed having Brother Black with us, and here we are now on another Wednesday night. We're looking forward to what the Lord's going to do here. Well, we're going to go ahead and uh, have a word of prayer for the offering, brother. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for this evening to be able to be in your house, to worship you and praise you and hear your word. Lord, bless our hearts and open them to the word and pray that you might put your hand upon the pastor and fill him with your strength. We ask you to bless this offering, bless the gift and the giver. Let all things be done to your glory and your honor. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Amen. Appreciate that. Go ahead and grab your prayer bulletin, and we'll go ahead and look over uh, these requests here this evening. Uh, can, we do praise the Lord for what he did this last week, allowing us to see done uh, through soul winning and outreach this week. Five souls saved uh, over the last week, and so rejoicing in that. Amen. Uh, that's good stuff. Hey, no campaign or anything going on, and uh, just the good old obedience. And so praise the Lord for that. Another uh, baptism this past week and just rejoicing with Nadine in that decision. And, uh, and so I uh, will continue to pray for past, uh, with Pastor for um, some upcoming events here. You see our Vacation Bible School and the Teen Spectacular. And again, uh, reaching out with the gospel. And so let's be praying uh, for these events coming up and uh, for the Lord to do a great work uh, on that week, first week of June. 
Our special request this evening, continue to pray for Brother Andy and uh, the recovery uh, of his hand uh, from that surgery that he had. Um, also for little Joey and uh, with his, uh, the tubes being placed uh, in his ears and things are going the right direction for him. He uh, is doing well and so praise the Lord for that. Be praying for his recovery. Um, I know one of the concerns that they had was just the, your equilibrium getting knocked off when you get those tubes put in and just the adjustment that a, the child has to make with that. So be praying for him. Um, another friend of the Volonicheks, we mentioned this last week, Emily, and uh, for the test results, they're waiting on the, that news there. And so uh, be praying for favorable results and for wisdom uh, for the doctors as they examine what's going on there. I'll be praying for uh, Elizabeth Weiser's mother, and uh, she had that surgery, and, uh, and so uh, just be praying for that recovery and for everything to go uh, well into the future here. Um, from what I understand, they got everything as far as they know, yep, and so, um, and they thought they would be able to, but you, you never know uh, right off the, after the surgery, and so just continue to pray for her and for uh, her recovery there. Uh, be praying for Jeff O'Donnell, if you would, Pastor's brother, and uh, he was in the hospital, uh, hospitalized because of this lung uh, issue that he was having, and I just heard now that he is home and, uh, and headed the right direction, so praise the Lord for that, um, but let's continue to pray uh, for uh, these ongoing issues with his health as well. Um, we've no, no, not too many updates here on our long-term list. I know Brother Rick, he's recovering and, and doing uh, better all the time, so continue to pray for him outside of being a grump. Are you watching, Brother Rick? <laughs> yeah, I said, come on. And, uh, and so, no, he's doing well. And, uh, and then Wendy Baker, they, they did, were able to get that fluid drained off, and um, they're still waiting on the results from the tumor, basically, uh, what's going on there. At least I have not heard that update, but um, what they were able to do with pulling the, the liquid off, they were pleased with the results of that and what was in the liquid. Um, and so no f further concerns because of that, but still concerned with that tumor. So uh, let's continue to pray for her and for her recovery from the heart attack, the stroke, the cancer, all of that. Um, let's continue to pray for that situation. Obviously, we're still playing, uh, praying for the church plant. And uh, Pastor mentioned this even again Sunday. And so let's be fervent about that. Um, we don't want to back burner this thing. We want it to be uh, front burner and uh, on high. And so uh, let's be praying the Lord would lead us to the building and uh, where he would have Brother Robido to get that started and uh, just for the wisdom that's needed to uh, be in the right place at the right time uh, so God can bless. And so uh, let's continue to pray for that situation there. We have our expectant mothers and my understanding, I think Allison's going to be going in Friday uh, and for uh, an induction if she lasts that long. And, uh, and so be praying for that Friday, but we have our other mothers here expecting over the summer and into the winter months, let's be praying for them. Our Entreat and Encourage section, we have our Couriers for Christ, and uh, this is probably one of the most complimented ministries of the church. Uh, we hear a lot of feedback, uh, positive feedback that is, uh, regarding the kids going out, and so it's always a blessing, and uh, as well as it being training grounds for our young people uh, to get out and hit in the streets and getting the gospel out. And uh, they have a good time doing it as well, especially when they come back with the big gulps. They, they really feel like they were a blessing to the Lord. And, uh, but uh, continue to pray for our couriers. The Wisers have been heading that up recently, and, uh, and so appreciate them going. Brother Jim Moss has been driving them out in the bus. And so let's be praying for those folks as they uh, lead that part of our soul winning outreach. Our missionaries this week are Caleb Edwards uh, to Israel and then Le uh, the Lighthouse Legal Ministry. Um, Caleb Edwards, uh, obviously with uh, Israel, they were locked down for quite some time, but they were able to get back in, and uh, their first trip back in was right to the Gaza Strip, and they went in there and uh, just recently got back from that trip, and they had meetings with uh, a bunch of colonels from the IDF and uh, met with a lot of military folks there. They, they had a tremendous meetings, uh, meetings with 45 people in one room at a time, all different, all over the place. And, uh, and so uh, just continue to pray for them as they reach out in that area. And then we have um, the Lighthouse Legal Ministry. Let's continue to pray for them. Uh, Brother Jim Robideau is kind of heads that ministry up for now up in Ashtabula. And uh, I know they're looking for uh, the Lord to continue to provide uh, leadership and wisdom in that area. There's always more to do. And uh, the ministry uh, is in need of more, lo more lawyers 
And, uh, and so let's be praying for that ministry. They've been a blessing to us in, I don't know, countless ways um, that we've been able to get a hold of them for just different questions. And uh, so it is an important ministry. Let's continue to pray for them. Pastor Cecil Thayer is our pastor of the week this week over at Maslin Baptist. Uh, and then Mackenzie Anderson is our service member of the week. Mrs. Kane is our shut-in. And, uh, and so you have some contact information there for uh, the uh, writing notes and the, and the like. All right? Um, I think that that's it as far as updates go. And so we'll take a few moments now and uh, go to the Lord in prayer. And so let's uh, go ahead and partner up with somebody close by, and we'll pray for the next few moments.
Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity we have just to come before you this evening to make our requests known to you, Lord. Father, just grateful for the souls that we've seen and saved this past week, Lord, and just your hand upon our church, Lord, and just allowing us to see uh, your work uh, done, Lord, and just thank you for that. I just thank you for the one baptized as well, Lord. And Father, I do pray you just be with us as we have our uh, upcoming events, Lord, as we, have, as we have the VBS and the Teen Spectacular. I do pray that you just bless that, Lord, that your hand would be upon uh, both of these uh, activities, Lord, that you would uh, be with the church, help us, Father, to be plugged in and involved. Father, I do pray you'd be with those that will be in attendance, Lord, and that you would soften the hearts of these uh, children and teenagers, Lord, that you would help us, Father, to see um, them get saved and, and their lives changed just as a result of it, Lord, and just the opportunity that that is, Lord. Father, I do just want to bring before you our prayer requests, Lord. I think of uh, all these people on this list that are hurting and in need of you, and I just pray that you'd meet their needs just as um, we briefly go over them, Lord. And I just pray that you'd watch over each and every one of them and give them wisdom as they heal from different surgeries or uh, just uh, different ailments, Lord. I pray you just meet their needs, Father. Lord, I do pray that you just bless the, the courier ministry, Lord. Just grateful for that ministry and just uh, the doors they get to uh, place flyers on each week and, and just the, the light they are to our community, Lord. And I just thank you for them and for uh, the Wisers and Brother Moss who uh, take a, have a great role in that, Lord, and just thank you for them. Father, I do pray that you just be with our missionaries, with the Edwards family and with uh, the Lighthouse Legal Ministries, Father. I pray that you just continue to bless them and help them, Father, to bring glory and honor to you, Lord, through their uh, respective ministries. Father, I do pray that uh, you'd be with our cancer list, Lord, and that you would just be with these people here, Lord, and their families, that you'd meet their needs, and uh, Father, that you would just comfort them, Lord, in this time of need, and it can be a scary thing at times for not just the person involved, but for the whole family. And I pray that you would just watch over them and place a hedge of protection about them, Lord. Uh, Father, we thank you for this night. We pray you just be with a uh, preacher as he brings a message in a few moments. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, go ahead and get your cell phone out. We're going to Kahoot it tonight, all right? Kahoot. We're all in Kahoots, all right? So I know... You just got to get your phone out, go to, you see at the top there, kahoot.it, unless you have the app downloaded, I know some of you have that, and then you put in that, that number right there, that seven digit code, okay, and uh, we'll see you as they're, you're coming into the game here, and, uh, and so, uh, yeah, first again, yeah, I ought to have a prize for Molly, she's first in, she uses it in school all day, so she's armed and dangerous with this game, all right, here we go, people coming in, the tax. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. All right. Wow. Uh, <laughs> all right. Come on in. We're not going to wait forever, so you got to get in here. 12, 13, 14. Mr. Cavanaugh. <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> oh, that's my other personality playing. <clears throat> all right. Here we go. Me? No, really? All right. Okay, we're just going to go a couple more minutes. Wow, we might get uh, the sound systems uh, feeling it tonight. All right, we're going to be reviewing Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. That's our memory uh, verse from last week. And so you can start thinking about that in your mind as I give you just one more minute here to get in. And um, actually less than a minute. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3... Two, one. All right, you ready? Here we go. Go ahead, Brother Caleb. Go ahead and hit start for us. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Quick review here. In three, two, one. Let your light. Let's go ahead and read it together. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. All right, so there's your little review. And we'll go ahead to the next with our first question coming right up. It's a quiz type question, so you're going to have four answers. According to Matthew 5.16, our light is visible to men by shining it in their eyes, making sure we have oil in our lamp, our good works, or how many lumens our flashlights are. <laughs> Ooh, we're getting, the airport must be amped up tonight. All right. Good. No one got it wrong. Oh, man. Good. We started easy. Our good works. Okay. Go ahead. Next question. Oh, we're skipping over who's in the lead. The principles in Matthew 5, 16 regarding men 
only apply to men and not to women. True or false? True or false? Come on. Now, this, the, your points are not just based on getting it right. Your points are based on who got it wrong. <laughs> All right. How quickly you respond, you get points with too. What is the intended result of men seeing your good works? To build lasting friendships, to cause them to love you, to make you feel good, or to bring glory to God? To bring glory to God. 27 answers in. To bring glory to God. Good job. You guys are familiar with this verse. That's good. All right. On to the next. All right. Five out of six. We're getting to the end. Put Matthew 5, 16 in the proper order. So you've got to slide it around on your phone. Five, six answers, 17, 15 seconds left. Slide it around on your screen and your phone there and put them in proper order. Five, four, three, two. I gave too much time for that one, I think. All right, there we go. Oh, maybe I didn't give enough time. All right, here we go. Now, we're down to the last question when we hit next here. This is for a $5 gift card to Tim Hortons. All right, $5 gift card to Tim Hortons. Matthew 5, 16, our last question. How many times does the word your appear in Matthew 5, 16? One, three, two, or none of the above? Ten, nine, eight, seven. Here we go, running out of time for all the cookies and the donuts in the shop. For all the donuts in the donut shop. All right, that was hard. Three is the correct answer. And so our final scores are, Brother Caleb, show us what we got. See who podium tonight in third place. A. All right, good job. All right, who's in first place? Second place, the Cab family. All right, and in first place is Kaylee Sells. All right, good job here, Isaac. You can run that down there. Isaac, can you run that over to her? And uh, good, let's keep up with our memory verses here. And uh, we're getting close to halfway through the year. All right, almost to halfway through the year. And so you've got a few in your little three by five card index by now. And, uh, and so I hope that you're sticking with those. Look in your bulletin just quickly for next week's verse or this coming Sunday. Pretty familiar verse. And uh, we'll just read this together and uh, prepare ourselves for Sunday. All right. Let's go ahead and do that together. We'll start with the reference. Ready, begin. Psalm 66, 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Such a truth that we should always keep in mind. All right, so good job. Let's keep up with our memory work. And 
tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with him though the night around me be falling but he bids me go through the voice of woe his voice to me is calling and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever Well, let's hope this mic works as good as that one just did. Well, that other one was giving us some trouble. Well, the Bible addresses a number of essentials and a number of important themes. However, the specific theme of the Bible is the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to this earth to establish His kingdom. See, the Bible's really a story about a king and a kingdom. That's what it's really all about. And so God seeks to establish His kingdom. It's going to establish a spiritual kingdom, of course, but also a physical kingdom. And all along, while he's seeking to establish this kingdom, Satan seeks to ruin it, tries to wreck it all. We have Adam and Eve in the garden, and they're doing quite well, obviously, and then all of a sudden Satan shows up, and boy, he just makes a mess of things, doesn't he? Cain and Abel they become casualties of another satanic attack. We have the world itself that was corrupted by Satan. I mean, we see just all those people turning their back on God until finally God sent a flood to cleanse and wipe away the corruption that had taken root and to begin afresh. Noah and his family, they were afforded a tremendous opportunity to rebuild, to repopulate the earth. But not long after that, influenced by Satan, of course, mankind is seeking to reach heaven without God and finds themselves confused and dispersed throughout. Again, this is a trend that would continue throughout the scriptures, even up to this day. There's obviously this battle taking place. Now, Seeing that it's God's purpose to set up a kingdom on earth, who's going to be the king? And this is the subject of our next topic in our Bible Truth series, the king. And that's what we want to talk about over the next couple of weeks. So let's have a word of prayer and we'll continue. Father, we come to you. We thank you for this time that we have together. We ask, Lord, that you'd speak to our hearts. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be a part of your family, for literally indwelling us, living inside us in the person of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for just the hope that we have in Christ Jesus and the help that we have. We ask that tonight you would walk these aisles, you'd speak to our hearts, may we be encouraged, may we be instructed and inspired, Father. Father, fill me with your spirit and allow me to be your mouthpiece tonight. I desperately need you. I pray that you would again anoint every listening ear. and Lord, may you just enable us, Lord, to leave here with what we need. Lord, we are a needy people, and we just commit the service into your hands and ask that, Lord, you would just have your will and way in our lives, even tonight. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So in the Old Testament, we have a, prophetical, a prophetic portrait of the king. If you look at that Old Testament, you see that 
For instance, turn to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Throughout the Old Testament, we see passages that prophetically portray the king. And this is one of those passages, a very familiar passage, one that we often address and deal with during the Christmas time. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And what a wonderful portrait that's painted of this coming King. Even as the Old Testament provides us with prophetic portraits of the King, we also have the New Testament that provides us with historic portraits of the King. Now, we're given the Gospels, of course, and of course they record the life and the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to learn a little bit about Jesus, you go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And there, of course, we have eyewitness accounts of Jesus Christ and his ministry while on earth. We even have many other things that we learn about Jesus throughout the Gospels as well. Take John chapter 1, for instance. We recognize him even early on in the history of humanity and the earth itself. And we see many things like that. In John chapter 18, though, learn if you would, turn if you would to John chapter 18, verse 36. Again, we're given those gospels, but we also read about at some point in the New Testament about Pilate. Pilate uh, is interrogating the Lord Jesus Christ, and he asks the Lord a question. He says, art thou the king of the Jews? Art thou the king of the Jews? And this is Jesus' response in John chapter 18, verse 36 and 37. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now in my, uh, excuse me, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Jesus is saying basically, you better believe I'm a king. You better believe it. And you said it yourself, Pilate. And the truth is, is that the Jews aren't real happy about me being here because they don't want a king either. And of course, we know that the emperor of Rome's not going to want another king because he's king. But this isn't the time. This isn't the place. I'm going to establish a physical, visible kingdom, but not yet. One day it will be on earth, but not yet. For to this end I was born, and for this cause I came into the world. So we see in the Old Testament a prophetic portraits of the king. We also see in the New Testament historic portraits. Jesus made sure that we could find him anywhere in the book. Turn, if you would, to John chapter 5, verse 39. This is, this is a great passage. When he was on earth, he reminded his disciples and those that he traveled with and others that were listening that no matter where you look, in the scriptures, you're going to find me. If you got your eyes open, you'll see me, the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, we know that ultimately Jesus would be king. John chapter 5, verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. You want to know a little bit about me, Jesus says? Search the scriptures. You want to learn about me, you search the scriptures. Now listen, I, I know in the, the day and age in which we live, we, we like to turn our attention to blogs and to the internet and to Google and other things like that and ask the questions and have people respond. But Jesus is saying, listen, I don't care what age or dispensation you live in. I'm telling you, if you want to know something about me, you're going to have to get in this book. You're going to have to look into the scriptures. It's not going to be enough to simply get the opinion of a mere man or woman. You need to hear it from the horse's mouth. 
Now, I'm not being disrespectful. But too many times we're quick to go to someone or something to learn about him. And in reality, he says, you learn about me in the scriptures. And that in and of itself should move us and motivate us to be in God's word consistently. We talk about a relationship that we have with Christ. Well, how how do we cultivate that relationship? How do we ensure that it lasts and that it grows? Well, we only can do that through the Scriptures. If we're not in the Scriptures, then we're not going to see our relationship grow at all. Uh, It will not be cultivated. We'll not be able to see progress there. It'll go backward. You can continue to teach and sing in the choir and Go out soul winning even. We can do all the things that appear to be conducive with a relationship with Christ or even put us on a pinnacle or pedestal in the eyes of others. But my friend, I promise you this. Your relationship with Christ is no stronger than your relationship with this book. You say, well, that makes my relationship pretty pitiful. We'll do something about it. That's all. Start today. Do something as of today. You know, take a few minutes. I was telling the, the teens at the youth, the teen rally, I said, listen, start somewhere. I don't care if it's just five minutes a day reading the Bible. But read it consistently. Get in it five minutes a day. Even. But don't do it five minutes and then, well, I'll do it 20 minutes at the end of the week. No, what God wants is a consistent relationship. My wife's not like, well, I want to have a relationship today. Let's talk today. Okay, good. We'll talk today for five minutes. And you know what? Instead of five minutes tomorrow, five minutes the next day, and five minutes the next day, I'll save it all up, and we'll have 15 minutes on Friday. She'd be like, what? What kind of relationship's that? And you know what? Sometimes we treat the Lord Jesus that way, don't we? Kind of like, well, I've missed my reading for about two weeks. I better catch up. And it's not about reading the Bible. See, that's not what the issue is. That's not the point. The point is getting to know Him. It's not getting through the schedule. It's not somehow trying to provide ourselves with a a pat on the back and say, yeah, I read through my Bible this year. Yeah, that's wonderful. I hope you do read through your Bible this year. And I think it's important that we do those kind of things. But I'll tell you this. It should be, the emphasis shouldn't be just to get through our Bibles. It ought to be to get into the Bible so it gets into us. Because it's a person, Jesus Christ. This book is more than just mere words on a page. Provides us with a picture of a person. And Jesus said, you want to get a good glimpse of me? You want to get a portrait of me? You want to get to know me? Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. You'll be convinced over and over and over and over again that I am who I claim to be. Someone says, my faith is, it's it's weak. Well, get in the scriptures, search the scriptures. So let's take some time and trace the journey of the king in scripture. And our journey begins with a person by the name of Eve. You already know that though, don't you? Our first prophetic portrait, in our first one, we learned that the future seed of the woman would be victorious over Satan. See, following the fall of mankind, God curses the serpent, and he informs him of his certain demise. Turn, if you would, to Genesis chapter 3. He says, listen, you are going down. You may have brought down my creation. You may have won a slight battle. But my friend, and he didn't call him friend, he says, I'm telling you now, you're going down. I don't think Jesus or the the Lord should have ever talked to Satan like that. I think that that was pretty offensive. Telling him the truth like that. I mean, don't you like serpents? You got something against serpents? Well, no, I'm just telling you that after what you did, there's a price to pay. Yeah, but that seems a little unfair to me. That's about how our culture is today, isn't it? Let me tell you something. Jesus said the truth will make you what? Free. 
You know why we're so bound today in our world and our culture? Because we don't want truth anymore. The very thing that we, we claim is restricting us is the very thing we need to free us. Look at how they go in and they, they went ahead and they protested Catholic Church because of their position on Roe the Wade. It's a joke. The Catholic Church hasn't changed its position, as far as I know, for centuries. Why is it a big deal now? Because they hate truth that much. It's only getting worse. They hate anything associated with Christianity because Christianity stands up and says, hey, I'm an individual, this is where I stand, and right is right and wrong is wrong. And they say, no, you have to believe what everybody else has been taught and told to believe, and if you don't, you're the enemy. That's where this is going. And don't think for a minute that Christians aren't going to be targeted from now on. It's interesting, isn't it? What a joke. It's pitiful what's going on. Jesus said, the truth will make you free. I tell you, what the LGBTQ plus community needs is truth today. They don't need teachers in schools telling them that it's okay to feel and think however they want. They need somebody that stands up with the Bible and says, as kindly as I possibly can, I want you to know the word of God is true. And only the truth will make you free from your bondage. Notice I said, as kind as possible. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I want to get in on a little preach here in a minute. I've I got to knock it off. I better be careful here. I'm supposed to be teaching tonight. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. He said, I'll put enmity. I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head. Thou shalt bruise his heel. Again, God curses the serpent and informs him that his, uh, tells him of his certain demise. Now, I want you to turn to Revelation chapter 12 now. So we're just in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. We have this first prophetic portrait, and this portrait is of the woman's seed bruising the head of Satan. Notice in Revelation 12, and again, we know that this battle con continues throughout. We're, we're, we're trying to identify this seed because it's ultimately through Eve that we begin to see the king. And the king is finding and making his way to the throne throughout the word of God. And now we have this battle that's ensuing. And here we have now, Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them down to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now this is the passage that a few weeks ago Brother Murphy talked about. I couldn't wrap my mind around what he was talking about at the time because it wasn't quite in this area. But after I talked to him at the end of the service, this was it. Now look what's going on here, and it's interesting because it fits right here where we're at now. He goes on, this, this woman, and says, wait, excuse me, it says verse 5, and she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. I don't know about you, but this is sounding kind of interesting. The woman is Israel. The child is none other than Jesus Christ. And the great red dragon is Satan and his, the kingdom that he's established. And he's seeking now to destroy the woman, Israel, and to take the life of who? Jesus Christ the King. 
It's interesting, isn't it? This is in the tribulation period. This is taking place after we've been raptured out. This battle is still going on. And this battle will continue to go on all the way up until Jesus Christ returns and establishes his kingdom in the millennial reign of Christ. Notice Revelation 12, 12 through 13. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you. Wait a second. Now, I just want to throw this out real quick. I'm just going to a little brain teaser, okay? A little brain teaser. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Why in the world would they be rejoicing? Because the devil's been come down to you, it says, to the earth. If the devil came down to the earth and the heavens are rejoicing, why would they be rejoicing? Maybe it's because the devil lives in the heavenlies. He resides in the heavenlies. Wait a second. We're not talking about where God resides. We know in the book of Job that when the sons of God went before God, that he snuck on in. Remember he went on in with them? But that wasn't where he resided. He went on in with them into that throne room. He went on up with those angelic hosts, those, those rulers, so to speak, those, those ones that were in charge that had their eyes over the creation. And he went up in there with them. Hold on. So where are they at? Where, where's, the devil's not locked away in hell. We know that, right? So where is he at? I believe he's in outer space. Let's go ahead and research outer space. Let's find a way to live in outer space. Why do we want to do that? God gave man dominion over the earth, not over the second heaven. We're only inviting problems going there. Why are we spending money trying to get up into outer space when God's given us dominion of the earth? Well, because our world's going to blow up. Our world's going to go crazy because global warming is going to destroy us all. We need to find it. And I'm telling you, that's one of the reasons why they're trying to find Life as well as opportunity to dwell in the heavenlies. They're only going to find Satan there and his boys and girls. After that question that was answered the way it was, I had to throw the girls in. <laughs> Notice what it says in chapter 12, verse 12 and 13. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Man, he goes crazy. Now again, the devil is never going to forget the curse issued by God in the garden. He's not going to forget that. Now he may think he can somehow overcome it. He may think he can turn the tide, but he knows that it's been issued. And there does come a part, even in the uh, point, even in the midst of the fight, that he realizes, I got but a short time. I gotta, if I'm going to get this done, I got to get it done now. The handwriting's on the wall. The king is coming. You know what's sad? It'd be sad for believers to not see the very thing Satan will see. It's sad for us, you know. We get so busy in our lives, we don't realize the king's coming. Wouldn't that be sad? We have but a little time, just a short time. Boy, if Christians would only think that way and, and live that way. Satan will. Isn't that funny? He has a greater reality of God than we do then, in some cases. Well, we gotta, we got to be on top of this thing. So he's going to fight God and his people to the end in order to sit upon the throne himself. But Christ, the seed of the woman, will prevail. Look at an interesting passage over in the book of Psalm, chapter 74, 14. And that I, I, I just want you to see this. This is pretty interesting to me. Now, when I was in Bible college, and, uh, you know, and, and I... Uh, I was in Bible college, and the teacher said, okay, I got an assignment for you. I want you to tell me what the creature in chapter 40, is it 40 or 41? 41. 
of Job is. What is that? What is Leviathan? What's behemoth? What is that? And I remember, I remember studying that out and trying to find out who Leviathan was, going through that chapter and identifying the characteristics and qualities of Leviathan. And I still remember turning my paper in, and as I, I broke it all down and I turned it in, I said, that is none other than Satan. And I remember, even my professor went, well, you know, a lot of people say that it's, I mean, all kind of things. It's crazy what they say the Leviathan is. But I said, no, no, I'm sticking with it. I'm sticking with that. I believe the Bible clearly identifies it as, as Satan. I want you to look at Psalm 74, 14, because I think it's important. Look at this interesting passage. Now remember in chapter 3, verse 15, that first portrait. I'm going to read that, and then we'll read this passage. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, thou shalt bruise his heel. 74, 14. Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces, and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. I think it's interesting. You, you got crushing Leviathan, crushing the heads. We're seeing that prophetic portrait being lived out, so to speak, in prophecy again in chapter 74, which ultimately places it in the tribulation period. And it tra puts us right there in chapter 12 range, where Leviathan or the devil is chasing Israel out into the wilderness, and God says, finally, enough's enough. This is ridiculous. I kind of like it. We serve a God who has everything already planned out. It is, nothing's taking him by chance. And sometimes, if we're not careful, we get the idea that life just happens. You know, we say things like, you know, uh, that's just the way it is. You know, uh, what's that, what, I, there's something else we ought to say. It, it is what it is. Is it really? I mean, really, when you think about it as a believer, is it really just what it is? I mean, is everything that's going on around us just random? Is it just happening? Or is there a purpose, a plan? Is, does it fit in God's overall scheme? We have, to, we have to really keep these things in mind in our life, don't we? Man, I don't know about you, but when I went by a gas pump and saw that it was 425 or something like that, I thought, what's going on? I know it's satanic. <laughs> but it's all part of the plan, isn't it? I mean, we get all bent out of shape, and I'm the first one to admit that I do. I'm telling you what, I get frustrated with things going on. We've got to remember that none of this is happening by chance. Nothing. God has it all orchestrated. I want you to pray for, uh, and I, I don't mean to embarrass anybody if they're watching live stream, but we, my wife had a, a group of kids in her bus, a number of them from uh, an area. They all got in the car and they went on out to, uh, somebody took them over to a skating rink and either on the way there or on the way back. We haven't gotten all the details, but they were in a car accident, and about four or five of her bus kids were hurt. Two of them are still in the hospital to this day. And you say, what is going on? Listen, I'm going to tell you something. That didn't take God by surprise. And God's not evil, nor is he wicked or bad because of it. Right now, there's somebody that's in some trouble because they might not have been doing things the way they were supposed to be doing them while they were driving, and as a result, they may be in trouble. Let me tell you what, sometimes, as humans, we need to take responsibility for some of the bad stuff that goes on. Now, I hope and pray that there was no negligence there. I really do. But either way, those kids are hurting, and those kids are in trouble, and a couple of them are, might be in bad shape. We'll see where that ends up, but let me tell you something. We let... We, we've got to remember who's in charge. And we've got to remember that God does have a purpose and a plan, even when it doesn't fit our purpose and plan. Right. And that's easier said than done sometimes, isn't it? 
But as we look at the battlefield and the lines that were drawn in the sand, all the way back in Genesis, we see horrible things that transpire and take place. There is literally a battle taking place. And don't think for a minute that Satan isn't at work today trying to wreck and ruin every good thing that God has on the, the docket. God never intended for those kids to be in an accident. God never intended for someone to be hurt or harmed. God never wanted any of that. He said, well, then why doesn't he do something about it? He will. He will. But in the meantime, if you're sitting here lost without Jesus Christ, my friend, you better be glad he hasn't decided to do something today because you'd go straight to hell. Because without Jesus Christ, you wouldn't have any hope of spending eternity with him. And if, you, if he came back and made it all right today, you'd still be in your sin and paying for it the rest of your eternity. Man, be thankful for the grace of God that doesn't come down and give us what we all deserve. It's easy for us to see certain people and go, they deserve. Well, you know what? When God sees us through his perfect eyes and he sees this imperfect mound of flesh, he sees nothing any better than the worst human being that's ever walked the face of the earth. I'm grateful for the grace of God. I'm glad that he is long-suffering. And I'm glad that even when I don't always understand, I know at least from the word of God, I can depend on him and say, you do. I'm going to have to trust you when I don't even feel like it, when I don't even know why, other than just that you are who you say you are. I'm going to depend on you. I'm going to trust you. You have a purpose. You have a plan. And until I can figure it out or until you reveal it, or if you never do, I'll just keep trusting you. We've got to get to that place. Well, we're going to end today right there. But again, we thank the Lord that he is in control. I don't always understand why he lets things happen. I don't get it all the time. It's like Brother Black was talking about. The Lord chose to take his wife home. But man, what a wonderful spirit Brother Black has. Never raised his fist to God, never got angry at the Lord, just said, well, Lord, you are God and you are my God. I'm going to trust you. I'm just going to trust you. Boy, I'll tell you what, what a testimony and example that is. And I know many of you have been through this. You've said the same things. You've made the right decisions and the right choices. Keep making the right decisions. God will bless you for it. Father, we come to you. We thank you again for all that you do for us. And Lord, we're grateful, Father, for just the wonderful examples we have, even in our congregation of folks that have gone through such difficult times but were willing to trust you in spite of it. And Lord, we ask, dear God, that you would just help us, Lord, in this room that maybe have yet to go through something maybe tragic or something very, very difficult like that. Lord, help us, Father, just to be willing to say, I'm going to depend on the Lord. I'm going to trust him and not my own understanding. He has a game plan. And I know there's a battle raging, and so not everything's going to turn out perfect all the time. I'm just going to depend on Jesus. I know he's going to set up his kingdom, and I'm just going to let him be king in my life even now. Lord, we'll thank you. We'll praise you as you do a mighty work in our hearts and lives, as you continue to be, Father, glorified in the midst of it all. We love you in Christ's name. Amen. Let's all stand, every head bowed, every eye closed, tonight as the music plays. You come if the Lord leads you to come. You're welcome to take care of business at a seat or pray where you're at, but you can also use an altar. You're going through a tough time. It's easy to ask why, and there, I don't know that it's always wrong to ask why, but we can't stay there to where we're always questioning God. We've got to eventually just trust Him.
All right, uh, just a couple things here this evening. You notice in your bulletin, uh, we've got a, <clears throat> a whole list of things coming up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, for the ladies, you have your, th- uh, your meeting, Ladies Refresher, on the 23rd. And uh, there is a cost to that, and you can see the details there. And there's a sign-up for that as well, I believe. And so please make sure that you get signed up for that. <clears throat> These ladies' meetings are, I know it's the first of the year. It's been a little bit since we had one. Um, but uh, it's a great encouragement, I know, for the ladies to get together, fellowship a little bit. Usually they have some kind of activity that goes along with it. Uh, but then there's also a challenge from God's Word in there as well. And uh, so I encourage all the ladies to be a part of that. Is, uh, what's the cutoff for that? Is that teens on up or... Talk to Ms. Sherry about that. She can answer those questions for you, and, uh, and we've got that coming up on the 23rd. Also, um, we have a couple meetings coming up um, for Vacation Bible School and Teen Spectacular on the 22nd, and, uh, and so please make note of that, the 22nd after the evening service. Uh, many of you have already signed up. If you haven't already, uh, we've got about another week. Next Wednesday night, that sheet will go away, and so if you're able to help with the Teen Spectacular or the Vacation Bible School, uh, June the 6th through the 10th, 6.30 to 8 o'clock um, in the evening. Uh, we could use your help for that, so please make sure you sign up. Also, um, there's a meeting regarding Lifted Up Ministries on the 29th, and, uh, and this is kind of a, a, a workshop in reference to training with the Lifted Up Ministries. And uh, the goal is not just to put on a production every year, but it's to equip people in being able to do the ministry. And so more details of that will be given, but um, we're going to be introducing some different trainings and workshops throughout the, uh, this next year. And, uh, and so th- that'll give you the details there. So something to start thinking about and, uh, and be praying about. That's on the 29th of this month. All right. Uh, those are the main ones I wanted to hit tonight. Make sure you have your bulletin there so you can reference those, get them onto your calendars, and that way we're ready to move forward when the time comes with these events. Let's have a word of prayer, and we'll be dismissed this evening. Father, we do thank you for tonight and uh, for our time together. Lord, we do pray that you would bless us as we go this evening. Uh, Lord, we thank you for what we've heard uh, from your word. Lord, the, the simple truth even of just the fact that you have everything in order. There's a plan, and we know that you're already victorious and that you're holding off for a purpose, and we should work while the night is, for the night is coming. And so, Lord, help us to be diligent servants for you. Uh, Lord, I pray that as we leave this evening... Uh, you would embolden us, and as we go throughout the remainder of this week, give us opportunity to share the hope of the gospel with those that are around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.